Good morning, you. A commenter recently asked me to talk about how I approach learning new subjects in math, and I figured people might benefit from hearing how I approach self-studying. If you're new here, I'm young. I'm currently finishing my first year as a mathematics PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm interested in non-commutative algebra, if that wasn't obvious, by my channel. Getting into the advice, before even starting, you need to understand what you want to study, which sources you want to use, and what is ultimately your goal, i.e. what you are trying to get out of studying whatever you're studying. This will determine how you should approach the subject. Trying to read an advanced monograph or a paper on a result the same way you would read a basic algebra textbook is not going to give you good results. So let's break that down. What you want to study means that you need to figure out the thing that you want to study. But that sounds obvious, but what I mean is either a general area, or a specific subfield, or even a specific theorem. You might also not know exactly what you want to do, but let's assume for the moment that you do know what you're trying to study. So, whatever you're trying to study and the amount of generality directly impacts what sources you should use. Additionally, you should try and find sources that are at your level. So, there could be some books that cover the same topic in different levels. And everyone's math journey is different. Not everyone can immediately jump into Hartshorn after learning basic topology. So just pick a book that you can follow. You should also not be discouraged by what people say of a source. As long as it's mostly correct and you note any mistakes along the way, because many older books are famous for their longer writers, you might be able to connect better with the writing styles of some authors or be more in tune with the order of exposition of one author than another. The higher up you go, the less choice you get, but you can and should still try and find the correct source for you. The final thing I'll say about sources is that often one can find expository papers that are very clearly written for many areas in the more advanced but not cutting edge part of math. So these usually come in the form of master's thesis or bachelor's thesis or U REU projects. The U Chicago REU is in particular notorious for a lot of papers like that. Finally, we come to what your ultimate goal is. Do you want to learn a subject from the ground up? Then you can just read an introductory textbook linearly, doing the exercises along the way and maybe supplementary exercises. We'll talk about that a bit later. Maybe you just want to learn parts of a theory. If you want to study a theory generally using a monograph, you might want to not to read linearly. Usually you should read the basic theory in the first few chapters and then skip around to results that interest you. The amount of detail that you wish to understand, ranging from vibes to completely understanding every little detail, also entails how you should approach studying. When you're reading a paper, usually you will need to cross-reference a lot of results from other sources, and you will often skim the paper first to understand the general idea and then start zooming in on results and details that you're interested in. And it is assumed that if you're reading a paper, you are interested in something in that paper. If you are just interested in learning the proof of a result, an expository paper is your best bet, and they're usually written in a way to be read linearly. If uh, you are interested in the applications, then you should diversify your sources and look for applications in many books. For example, the Groff and de Kriemann Roth theorem is far reaching in many subfields of algebraic geometry, can be found in a lot of places. So if you want to understand how to use it in a specific context, you're going to have to find resources that cover your desired area and then find examples of applications in those resources. Internet forums are your friend, especially when looking for many examples from many different sources, especially Math Stack Exchange and Math Overflow. If you want to find references or an explanation for a topic X, just search those websites for X motivation or X application, etc., and you will find a plethora of results. From there, you can refine your search using keywords, look at the sources given, or even ask your own question if you can't find that it had already been asked. Moreover, if you have access to professors at an academic institution that do things in the field you're interested in, ask them for references. I cannot stress that enough. They know best. Regardless of what you're doing, you should always be taking notes. Taking notes not only lets you rewrite things in your language and, if typed, gives you an easier way to look through a condensed version of what you already know, but notes also serve the same idea as rubber duck debugging in computer science. Writing down results and arguments that, and uh, maybe uh, filling in details allows you to get a second look at them and see if there's any gaps in your understanding. 
For the same reason, if you can explain the material out loud to yourself or to others, I would recommend that. I, for example, make videos sometimes, uh, for example, on schemes, and other times I prepare lectures for reading courses or seminars or just for fun, which is another good way to force yourself to understand more of a topic. Obviously, depending on your ultimate goal, notes can range in level of rigor and detail and how ordered they are. All of this goes towards the general approach I think you should have when learning new math, but it still doesn't cover how you should be studying math. So my main rule is, first of all, repeated passes of the material rather than long study sessions. I let the material run around in my brain and even go over the same sections several times during the day instead of trying to cram everything at once. In particular, I will often try and reprove results that I've seen or revisit basic theory and proofs to refresh myself on useful proof techniques and see that I'm not missing anything by forgetting a basic result. When I'm learning a new area, I often try and immerse myself in it, so I will sometimes try and recall definitions of proofs several times a day at random times. Mind you, this isn't an exercise in memorization, rather I try and explain the details of the construction of proof to myself. This more obsessive method of study a priori becomes less useful the more details there are, as you're spending more and more time digging into the finer details. But with time, one learns which details are less important to your current goal and so don't need to be covered as extensively. When you start doing research, you learn to understand that you cannot learn all of the math even all of the math in your area, and so you will be forced to accept and even apply certain established results without seeing proof or not fully understanding the more minute details of constructions you are working with, while still being convinced they are correct and understanding the technical details. Note that all of this is said while still remaining completely rigorous. Uh, consider, for example, a mathematician who doesn't do set theory, and so does not concern herself with set theoretic details of her work. So she does not care if she used the axiom of choice or not, or nor, should these nor does she concern herself with writing out every proposition in symbolic logic, but she is still completely rigorous in her arguments. Let me be clear that I think studying shouldn't be done in very long sessions, but rather in shorter sessions spread out throughout the day, so 30 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour 30. I also don't think you should be spending most of your day studying unless that's your job, i.e. if you're a college student, a full-time college student, or a PhD student. But even then, I would emphasize setting hard boundaries on when you should be resting, for example, over the weekend, and how much you should be working. Give yourself time to do the things you love besides math or whatever else you're studying. Obviously, the other thing you should be doing is solving exercises, and a lot of them. You gain experience by doing but you should be solving the right kind of exercises. If you're following a book, that's great, but sometimes books have exercises that are way too easy or way too hard or just boring and don't actually teach you anything or they don't even have them at all when you get to a higher math. So another good idea is to look up courses in good universities that are parallel what you are studying and try and find homework sheets online for those courses. Besides that, using other books uh, for supplementing exercises is also obviously an option. Usually any field with books that have exercises will have a few options to choose from. You can also try and see online which books are recommended for their exercises. When solving exercises, try and pick up on techniques or tricks that seem ubiquitous and also pick up on where they are used and how. For example, elementarily, adding and subtracting an element, so adding zero, to do some algebraic manipulation, or, uh, for a more advanced example, passing to localizations to use Nakayama's lemma. Some people try and prove every theorem they come across before looking at the proof to better their understanding. And while this might work for simple theorems and very introductory material, where you're just unfolding definitions, this quickly becomes quite fruitless and arduous as you go into a more advanced material. Many theorems, even smaller ones, contain observations or tricks that took mathematicians collectively a while to come up with, or they require techniques or facts that you're not yet familiar with. I do think that you should always try and fill in the missing details of a proof. Whenever an author uses the words clearly or obviously, you should doubt it and try and understand for yourself why this thing is true. Sometimes this obvious fact is actually quite non-trivial, especially in higher math. Filling in the details also tests your understanding for the rest of the proof.
I also think you should try and prove for yourself statements that are just unfolding definitions uh, as that betters understanding. And if there are two statements with similar proofs, trying to translate one case to the other is also very much useful. But I would not spend too much time trying to prove the uh, harder theorems. Generally, when solving exercises, getting stuck for a long time without any new ideas and just trying to hammer at it will usually not take you far. It is best to bounce ideas off of a friend or even ask for a small hint from someone who knows uh, the solution. Even if you eventually need the answer explained to you, don't feel like you were robbed of a learning experience because you were still able to try and work on this and now you get to use new techniques or new applications of all techniques you learned from the, this proof for other exercises. And obviously, incremental hints and subtle changes to perspective are best, but those can be tricky to give uh, for exercises sometimes. So this is all the advice that I could think of pertaining to how I study. Please keep in mind that this is the method of study that works for me, but that I have also found works for a lot of other people uh, that I've tutored or TA that I gave this advice to. This might not be suited for you, but I would at least try and immerse yourself more in the material you're learning and reread or refresh yourself on material over time or often. If you have any more advice you would like to share or opinions on the advice that I gave, please do so in the comments. And until next time, I hope you apply this advice and learn some cool math. See ya.